Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Asla and on this channel I talk about tech, career and everything related to software engineering with some uh, occasional lifestyle videos. So in this video, I want to critique my first ever CV to get my first real tech job. So this was the CV that I used to get my internship while I was finishing my university and this internship then eventually turned out to be my full-time software engineering job once I graduated. So you might be watching this uh, mainly for two reasons. One, you want to get some inspiration to know how to write a good CV or two, you just want to know what kind of CV I used in to get my first ever tech job. So both are good reasons to watch this. So without further ado, let's get to it. So I have my CV open here on my laptop and looking at this CV in hindsight, I can say that I could have done a lot of things way better. You have to remember at this time when I made the CV, I did not have any real IT experience and also I did not even graduate. So I, I can see that I was trying to be really pushy here, but still I managed to get the first internship. So it's, it's not that bad. So on the title, I have junior developer written, which is a good thing to do because uh, it almost gives uh, the hiring manager or the recruiters the feel of what this person is looking to get a job as. Even though I did not have real company working experience, I still decided to go with the junior developer title so that they know, okay, this person wants to be in a junior developer role, uh, which I think is a good thing to do because even on my updated CV at the moment, I have a BC in IT and automation engineering or BC software engineering written on it. And the second thing I have here is linked to the projects. Back then I had my own personal website, techieinprague.com, which was kind of my portfolio website where I had all my projects that I built, different types of website, web apps, calculator, and those things. That's a good thing to do. I do not have that website anymore, so I cannot show you that. The second thing I have on the title here is GitHub, which is a link to my GitHub account where I have all the projects that I worked on. So the title looks pretty good so far. And then I have a small context or like an intro to the CV. Here I'm writing, a, I'm a final year IT and automation engineering student with a passion for technology and software development. Plus, my willingness to learn has to lead me to pursue a full stack web development bootcamp outside my university curriculum. Mm. I'm looking for junior developer opportunity where I can apply, learn and grow with the knowledge gained from my handful of projects. One of my objectives is to stay updated with the latest IT trends and technologies. I'm confident if given the opportunity, I can be useful talent to the company. This is a big no-no. Uh, if I were to write this CV right now, I would never do that. But like I said, uh, when you look at in hindsight, you can always say that you won't do something. I was still a student, so I was trying to say that even though I was doing a specialization in IT and automation, like I said in my previous uh, video, IT and automation is like a broad specialization. There are like automation related subjects in there and IT related subjects in there. But if you want to really go into the software side of things, you really have to learn uh, new technologies like web technologies uh, which wasn't really taught at university even I think even if you take uh, computer science as your bachelor's I don't think a lot of the modern frameworks or modern things that you use for general software development or web development for that instance is taught in university for example react angular all these modern frameworks are not really taught in university so this is one of the reason while I was in my final year I started doing a bootcamp which was like around 100 hours of bootcamp which i took on udemy basically to get up to speed to be able to get a junior developer position to know html css javascript uh, at least few frameworks to land that first tech job so this was done besides my university so i had to show that okay i'm also an engineering student on top of that i'm also taking this boot camp which shows my willingness to learn which is a good thing but i was trying to be really pushy here on the intro if i were to write it right now i wouldn't do that so right below the context i have interest written i wouldn't do this right now it's good to have an interest section where you can show the things that you're passionate about or things that you want to pursue eventually in the future which you have some knowledge about but you don't really have the working knowledge it's okay to have them on the side but i wouldn't put them on top of my cv i would rather put my experience first the projects that i worked on and then the interest so in interest, I had AI, machine learning, cryptography. Uh, cryptography, I think I probably meant blockchain, even though it goes hand in hand. Then I had here additional skills, which included SAS, SCSS, AJAX, jQuery, 
which I wouldn't really add uh, right now. I would rather just add it under skills. And I also had currently learning Bootstrap and JavaScript ES6. Um, I wouldn't do that uh, at that time. Like I said, since you're a student, you're just run trying to tell them, okay, you're learning, you're upskilling, just give me the opportunity. So that was the vibe I was going for. Next section I have here is programming projects. So like I said, since I don't have real IT working experience, I had to show what kind of projects I built. Starting off here with MATLAB and Simulink. So MATLAB is a graphical programming environment uh, where you can simulate or model like dynamic models. The reason I gave MATLAB and Simulink at the top here is there's a lot of companies that look for IT and automation background like you where you have uh, experience using like automation softwares like Mat MATLAB Simulink. For example, Porsche here uh, extensively looks for people who are really skilled with MATLAB or C or C++. Yeah, that's the reason I gave MATLAB here. Uh, so I had a couple of points under that. I did electrical usage, plotted electrical usage of different economic sectors, audio frequency for an organ, uh, automotive uh, performance modes. These bullet points are not really great, actually. The reason they're not great is that I'm simply writing what I did, what the project is about. Ideally, all these bullet points should have a, a format. The format should be what, how, and why. So for example, on my current CV, I have a, a bullet point that says, I implemented a trigger framework that decreased the deployment time by 10%. For what I have answered, I introduced an trigger framework. Why is an answer to the question that I decreased the deployment by time by 10%. So here you have what, uh, why, and the impact you made. So ideally all your bullet points should be like that. And here, uh, since I did not work for any company to make any real impact, uh, that's missing. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're going over writing all these bullet points under each project. So below that I had Python and C, C++ project that I wrote. Even here under Python, I wrote 2D Hangman using Py, Py game. I just expected the recruiter or hiring manager to know what's a 2D Hangman. Uh, actually, if I were to put it into the format that I just spoke about, I would say, I built a Python game using the library Pygame, which has a user base of 10 or 15 people, if if it has any. So that would be an ideal way of uh, writing it rather than saying 2D Hangman by uh, Pygame, which no one knows what's a 2D Hangman. That's a format that you should go for. And below that I have C, C++, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. All of this has missing uh, information. Way below that, I have a bachelor thesis. If you're someone who's looking to write a CV for a, a recent graduate or post-graduation role, and you, if your thesis is not really relevant to the kind of role you're applying for, I would not ask you to add the thesis over here, but I did add it because I did use some uh, technologies in it, so I thought it might be relevant, and especially since I was not a graduate at that time. So I wrote ongoing thesis on autonomous driving using sensors like radar, lidar, and camera. Uh, experience will be conducted using system design platform LabVIEW using deep learning tools like TensorFlow. So at the end, I decided not to use LabVIEW. I went with a deep neural uh, network, a machine learning network called YOLO. You only look once. Uh, for my experiments, which was a great experience of learning. If your uh, thesis is relevant to the kind of role or the field you're trying to apply to, go on and add it. But still, I wouldn't add it at the top. I would probably add it at the end before my after my work experience. Moving on, we have my work experience. So here I wrote junior Python developer. Freelance in Prague helped colleagues, friends and acquaintances on university projects identified issues, analyzed information, provided solutions to problem. I did not have any real working experience, as I said, so I was just trying to explain what I did as a freelancer. So at that time at my university, I did a bit of freelancing. My friends, my colleagues, people I knew was giving me their university projects or the projects that need to complete using Python. And I was also learning Python at that time, so I was really interested to solve their solutions. Uh, usually some of the university projects are relatively easy, so I did take them on for me as a learning challenge. This is what I'm writing here about. Below that I have the digital creator, self-employed frog, and here I'm writing about my social media presence on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. At that time, I, I don't think I had YouTube. I did have my Instagram account where I was sharing about web development and general software development and technology related stuff. The reason I added that was like, one of the reason I don't have any relevant experience. Second reason, I'm also not against the idea of getting a role like developer advocate where you can 
uh, advocate or you have the understanding of all the technologies and you you're ready to learn new ones if you want to and you're ready to mingle or work with people who are tech savvy so this was the kind of idea i was trying to give by adding this specific experience here i think it worked i don't know then below that i had my education on education i first wrote about my boot camp because uh, like I said, Bootcamp had more relevant experience, more relevant technologies that I was looking to work with. So I had my Bootcamp, Comprehensive Web Development Bootcamp under us. I wrote what other things I'm learning under that. Below that, I had my uh, bachelor's. I wrote an expected graduation date in July, 2021, which is the month I actually graduated. And then I also had my exchange studies. Moving on, on the sidebar, I had a few other things that I added. First one is contact, of course. And the second one, I had skills where I wrote HTML, CSS, Python, JavaScript, Java C. So whatever skills you have, you can add it onto your site or ideally on the top. But the mistake I did here was I had like a levels that shows like what level of knowledge I have which is a huge mistake. So here I have like a five star system and for example, HTML and CSS, I gave a four star. If you think you as a recruiter or from a hiring manager's perspective, what are they supposed to know from this? So I know I have four levels of HTML, I have three levels of Java and JavaScript. So what does three level means? Does that mean I'm expert, I'm intermediate or I'm a junior? It's not really evident by giving this level. So I would fully avoid that instead if you want to give some sort of level based on your experience i would rather go like beginner intermediate expert or you just said these many years of experience rather than giving a level which no one knows what it is below that i had my certifications the date of certification i got python advanced c java 11 which is good i still have it to this day on my cv and below that i have my strengths which i have avoided on my updated cv which says Oral and written communication, reliable, consistent, committed to lifelong learning, which are all good things to have uh, in a person or a person uh, in a candidate, but it's not something that people base you on to hire. Uh, let's say they are looking at your CV and experience, and if you have um, zero related experience and they're just seeing oh strength this guy is reliable he has oral and written communication skills or this guy is committed to lifelong learning let's hire him no one said that ever they just expect a person getting hired to that role to have all these skills rather than just pointing it out so it's pretty irrelevant i would completely avoid having that on the cv and below that i had soft is uh, salesforce matlab uh, vs code jet brains e even here i use the levels which i would fully avoid and below that i had languages uh, english and czech i was uh, learning czech at that time Chesky. even here i will have a full five levels for english and two levels for Czech. I don't know what they should make up from this. I would rather say English fluent, Czech intermediate or Czech basic or learning A1 or A2. Even that's a good metric than giving these levels. So that's all I had on my first CV, the one that I used to land my first tech internship before I graduated. So this internship eventually turned out to be a full-time job. They extended their offer once I graduated. Looking at the CV, it wasn't that bad, uh, but there are a few things that could have been avoided that could have been better. Yeah, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video. If you did, I might think of doing a second version of this video where I go through my current CV with the relevant experience. Until then, thanks for watching. I will talk to you all next week. Peace.